uh, in light of the regular season coming up so quickly, we got to talk about uh, the rosters being finalized uh, in NWSL. So all 12 clubs uh, putting out their respective statements and their rosters, the the set of players and string of players that they are going to run with, at, at least in the in the first part, uh, first the first half of of this season. Um, there's a there's a lot of different things that come into play. I think when you're looking at these clubs and how they're finalizing rosters, we were also looking a little bit at the rules, which we'll we'll chat a bit about in this episode as well too. But um, some minor differences uh, in terms of the clubs putting out their their rosters because I know when we were looking at some of these releases, we were like, gosh, like some of these clubs have uh, some smaller amounts of, of players versus you know larger numbers on on their rosters. Um, so I believe it's a minimum of 22 players with a maximum of 22 and four supplemental players can be utilized and count uh, towards the, the, the actual roster. So uh, there's examples of like, Hey, you can have 26, but 22 of those are going to actually be senior players. Mm -hmm. And maybe four of those players are more supplemental um, type of players. So uh, we're, we're, we're seeing, I think across these rosters, maybe more of the lower number uh, for, for players on them. But I think it's I would Lincoln. say, yeah, I would say yeah. it's a lower number, just, Compared to kind of what we've been seeing, especially throughout the preseason roster, we were getting like 33, 34, 36. Oh, yeah. They had to whittle it down for sure. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, though, because I think even within some of these, uh, some of the roster releases with the smaller number uh, of players on there, within some of them, uh, you could go through the rosters and see how um, there are still some clubs who are saying, hey, like, We've extended a contract to, to player A, B, or C, and just to, to notify and have that in uh, within the release. Like maybe there's still some news to come from some clubs uh, with with players who are still in the process of maybe going, you know, thumbing through their contracts and, um, you know, be before they sign. One of the things that stood out for us though, when we were looking throughout some of these finalized rosters, was that a Gotham FC. Uh, we noted that within their release they said that uh Sinead Fairley is uh, is a midfielder mm -hmm. who is making her return question mark to to the league mm -hmm. because they noted within the release that uh, they're in the process of finalizing a contract with Fairley. Yes, I think this is um massive honestly because this is a, a player that um in her 30s I believe uh Sinead's about 33 years old and the last time she played in the NWSL was in 2015 and that was for Portland Thorns and um then she came forward with her her accusations um uh, and everything that and, and mistreatment and abuse and uh, misconduct that she faced during her time playing in the NWSL in 2021 and now that it's 2023 she's um, turned that page. She's wants to rejoin the league. She wants to play and she joined Gotham um, in early February as a non-roster invite um, and went through their preseason with them. And, and now Gotham has extended a contract and they're looking to just finalize that contract with Farrelly um, because she's been in camp and not only did the club put it out there, but um, they put her name right on there saying that, hey, we're, we're waiting for this to come, um, waiting for this roster announcement and, and the contract to be finalized. And then there's going to be an official announcement about um, her role and, and her position on the team as a, as a midfielder. And I know that during the preseason for Gotham, uh, they played a number of preseason friendlies and matches. And it's some some of them were harder to watch than others, but Sinead, Far Sinead Farrelly, getting minutes, getting time, scoring a goal in one of those preseason matches. It yeah. was fun to see those those clips on Twitter and social media circulating around. Um, but the rosters, when they drop, there's so many like little Easter eggs to look for and find. Yeah. And I just appreciate Gotham being like, hello, heads up. This player yeah. is getting a contract. Um, yeah, this this is coming. I, I think that's that's the it's the phrasing, right? The, the word that we want to point out to and, and note specifically, it's the phrasing is it's finalizing a contract. So for me, that's indicative that fairly is, is going to be part of Gotham's yeah. uh, 2023 roster. And, and that roster. And when you look at like the midfield unit for Gotham that they've have, um, Kawasumi, 
Allie Long, Christy Mewis, Victoria Pickett, Yasmeen Ryan, Delaney Sheehan, McCall Zerboni, and then you add in a Sinead Farley in that group. Like, I I like this. I like kind of what's happening at Gotham. I think that it's a it's a bit of a resurgence for this team, and especially like a player like Sinead, who's coming back into the fold, looking to get back into the mix of the NWSL. And I agree. I think the way the phrasing had it, they just were waiting for the signature, waiting for that John Hancock and then she's going to be listed on the roster. Um, but there's a lot to kind of break down and be yeah. excited about for all these teams. Yeah, we want to we want to point out a little bit of a history making signing where we're chuckling about it because I feel like with the new under 18 mechanism <laughs> that exists in NWSL, we're actually just seeing the first of perhaps many of these to come down uh, in the pipeline. But San Diego Wave. Uh, announcing that they have signed 15-year-old na- uh, San Diego native uh, Melanie Barcenas. So officially the youngest player in NWSL history to sign a professional contract, uh, just uh, eclipsing the record that was set just a week ago, it feels yeah. like, by Chloe Ricketts with Washington Spirit. Officially the youngest player, I believe it's 15 years and 138 days or right around there, that number there. Um, but this this is quite the story. It is a local talent. Grew up playing club soccer with San Diego Surf Soccer. Um, has trained with the rave all uh, the wave already, and uh, just maybe it just sort of feels like this was a signing that was going to happen at some point in time sooner or later. But it's here now, and uh, I do appreciate in, in in the release and in the announcement of everything. Um, you know, Casey Stoney talking about yeah. how excited they are as well to, to sign this player, but still continue to to work with them as they're a very young player uh, and want to sort of help her, yes, navigate professional career while still having the normalcy of, of being a young, a young teenager. Yes. I think that's the balance that we've seen with um, someone like an Alyssa Thompson, who's at Angel City or a Chloe yeah. Ricketts. It's finding that balance. And that's what, although there is this, the new mechanism in place for um, players under the age of 18 to, to play in the league and to sign, there are still so many factors that are protecting these players. Like the, parent and guardian as, as well as the player have to give consent they have to live at home they can't be traded they can't be waived um, their contract runs through their 18th birthday there's like so many different factors to protect um, these young athletes but I really like how San Diego did this because they not only announced this player and and they had her in the kit and she's been playing with preseason so they had game footage of her actually during preseason playing but they got Mel to do media and yeah. and talk a little bit so not only did fans of of the wave get to hear about this player being signed and maybe seek a clip or two of her being played but they got to hear directly from her um and i uh she is very young <laughs> she, yeah she is very young it's it's so uh cool to see honestly I mean I'm excited to see like her on the pitch and and kind of how things shake out that way but to kind of hear her in these like little social media takeovers or in the media press conference like she has this air of maturity about her for sure I mean she's being put in the spotlight she's a professional player at the age of 15 but there's also something about her that's like you are 15 like you are so young you are so young and she has a, a little bit of that youngness in her still and like it's it's cute to see frankly it is but um i am excited about it and i also love that san diego put out that they're calling her mel b like if we are doing a throwback to the spice girls mel b this mel doesn't even know who the spice girls are she's 15 and we're calling her mel b i'm all about it no, I'm, I'm here for it. I, I yeah, you could, you're looking at some of the the imaging and, and sort of the assets that come out in, a, in an announcement like this. And you're just like, gosh, uh, players uh, is so young. Um, and I'm excited to, to to see, you know, more from from Barcenas. And I'm sure there's there's a whole development plan in place for um, when and where and, and how they they want to. To, to utilize her, but uh, congr- congratulations to to the young player con- signing her first ever uh, professional contract. Uh, but in terms of the other uh, roster uh, tidbits that we wanted to, to highlight, we're a little curious about Ole Reign uh, side of things. Chicago Red Stars, uh, you know, 
putting in their notes as well that they are have some contracts in place with with other players. Uh, but we didn't see Tobin Heath on on Oil Reigns uh, roster, and and we've seen um, we've seen on, on social media and things like that uh, out in LA. So maybe there was some curiosity peaking whether or not uh, there would be ties there to to Angel City. But we haven't seen Tobin Heath uh, on on any on either of these these rosters for where for is club. Tobin Heath? <laughs> and we're just we're just wondering, you know, what, what's going on? Um, it's World Cup year, you know. We've we've heard from Andonovsky uh, in in media availabilities, um, you know, say that this is a player where you know getting close, cutting it close to, to the timeline and the build-up to the World Cup, and and hopefully they get to see uh, more out of Heath, you know, kind of post, you know, uh, surgery. Last, we got an update. Um, it's hoping Heath put on her socials that she was unfortunately, you know, had to undergo a surgical procedure. So uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, I think uh, NWSL is more fun when Tobin Heath is around. Yeah. And in it. So that's definitely something we uh, got to try and keep our eye on. But uh, Chicago Red Stars also in their uh, announcement uh, talking about Shayna Matthews. Uh, this is a player uh, that they have extended a contract to and someone who might be part of Chicago's attacking core in, in 2023. So I think at this point, so when we're looking at, at the rosters and, and if there are those teams that maybe have um, – on the lower end of the number of players on their roster, that there's room to add more, right? But I think at this point, it's almost like if you're going to add players to your roster, maybe the concept is to ensure that you get players at this point who have some uh, professional yeah. experience in NWSL and roll with them moving forward. Yeah, I think that's exactly it because there is a level of um, – understanding that you're going to be missing a significant number of players this year due to a world cup year. And because of that, you need depth on your roster. And when you're looking between someone that's been in the league for seven or eight years versus someone that has been in the league for one year and maybe has like a hundred minutes under their belt, you're going to go with the player that's been in the league for seven or eight years that that's played in a number of different squads and varieties. So that player is, is more likely to shift in. And that's someone like a Shana Matthews. I think it's a good signing for Chicago, honestly, to, to get some depth in a player like this. Um, I'm not sure how much we'll see of Matthews to start the year, but I imagine throughout challenge cup, we'll see Matthews and we'll, we'll see her get minutes and play and continue to uh, contribute on the pitch. But that's, it's a tough year. It is a really tough year for clubs, for GMs and coaches to make sure their roster is as stacked as it possibly can be while also adding depth. Yeah. And it's really hard to be a player this year because um, I, I mean, if you're one of the top talents on your club team and you're going to the world cup internationally, um, you're also then going to miss a big chunk of your, regular season yeah. and, and your challenge cup season with your club team. And that's disheartening. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you're a player that um, is going to start for your club team, but isn't going to play internationally, then you have to get used to playing with a whole different group of players uh, during that window when they're gone. And then likewise, if you're someone that's maybe a bit deeper on the roster bench and, and you're going to ride that bench a little bit at the start of the season, you then have to be able to turn it on, prove yourself and, and get in that starting lineup and get minutes when those players are gone. It's really just like an unbalanced year for everyone. It's, yeah. it's a little bit of chaos everywhere. It causes a little bit more headaches. Um, but hey, that's the beauty of this game and the beauty yeah. of a World Cup here. <laughs> It could lead to a little bit of disjointedness for sure. Yeah. I mean, Shana Matthews is going to be one of those players. You know, we could see her gone with Jamaica for, for the World Cup and see how Chicago has to navigate that uh, absence, as, as well as so many others for other teams across uh, the league. Uh, but we're getting closer to this, this regular season. And we're already starting to hear a lot of cool things for opening weekend. Uh, shout out to San Diego. Once more, the home opener uh, is currently at 23,500 tickets and counting. They expect to still Ooh. sell some more tickets and have more fans in the turnstiles for their game against Chicago Red Stars this opening weekend. And Alex Morgan making a very cool announcement uh, about a foundation. And uh, we're excited and wanted to chat about that a little bit here on Attacking Third, launching the Alex Morgan Foundation, a nonprofit initiative focused on equity and opportunity on the field and off. 
They said, join us as we work to build a confident path forward. Yeah, that seems to be kind of the motto of this Alex Morgan Foundation, a confident path forward. Um, Their biggest impact focus being equity in sports, opportunities for girls, and support for moms. Clearly something that Alex Morgan has a lot of experience in herself as a mom, as as a female playing uh, soccer professionally. And, and I think something pretty cool about – this foundation, I mean, there's a there's a lot of cool things about this, but the fact that Alex Morgan decided to start this in San Diego, right? We know when the wave became an expansion side and Alex Morgan was their first big player um, as a huge name that she is, but it was also a big impact that Alex Morgan was going home to San Diego where she wanted to play and where she wanted to be. Um, so I think being back in, in her hometown to not only play the professional game that she loves, but to make a change. And that's where she's starting. That's where the Alex Morgan foundation is, is going to kickstart itself um, committing to making a positive impact in the lives of girls and women in San Diego County. That's where they're starting. And then as this foundation grows, they're going to look to expand it to nationally, internationally, just continue um, the, the snowball effect of, of this foundation. But, Pretty cool. Love to see players making changes yeah. and impact outside of uh, just scoring goals and, and breaking records on the pitch. Yeah. Equity in sports, opportunities for girls, support for moms. I think that's kind of cool. We'll have to keep an eye on it and see what else comes out of the Alex Morgan Foundation. But uh, we've got a little bit more to chat about before we take a quick break. We want to talk about more kit fashion. Woo! League. Racing Louisville, breaking news right as we're live, of course. The Houndstooth kit. Look at that. Purple, black hues. You love to see it. They just dropped their 2023 Houndstooth kit, and it is an homage to Secretariat's owner, Penny Shannery, 50 years after her cult's iconic triple crown run. So I love that. Lean, leaning into racing's history yeah. what do you think lisa it's got the uh the purple and black kind of house tooth pattern i like the mint uh, i like the mint crest on, on this one i think that's a nice touch i do too i do really like the mint crest um there's something about this pattern that i am really digging for for racing level for those that are just listening it's like a oh gosh i'm not gonna be able to describe this like a checkered pattern I, I think don't that's even a good know what that it. is, but it's very cool. They talk about in the, the re- racing level talks about in the release how it's a celebration of pioneering women. Um, it, it's a midnight violet and lavender colors in the pattern. It's a houndstooth pattern. Oh my gosh, I'm reading that in the press release. Yeah, that's the pattern. <laughs> I did not know what that was. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, what is houndstooth? This is live for you people. Yeah. I was like, what's happening here? Um, I think it's very cool. I do that. So. I was like, what's going to happen when they're playing at home? But because of um, it, primary uniform for 2023, this will be it. But when it clashes with other teams that they play, there's a number of other dark yeah. colored teams in this league. Um, Racing level will wear their um, away mint kit that was revealed in 2022 when um, this clashes with other jerseys. But I really yeah. like it. It's very simple. I, I like the mint crest as well on the shorts yeah. and on the kit. But otherwise, like black shorts it's black socks i like yeah. it sharp yeah they're definitely not like wearing this when when they go play orlando right like that's not yeah. gonna be <laughs> uh but uh yeah i like it i think i think the 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 pattern is is cool um i like the the meaning behind it and i, I really really do like both of the mink uh, crest on on the jersey and and on the shorts as well like it's a cool kind of head to toe uh kind of uh kind of vibe and i like uh, all the photos that they're dropping it looks like they're kind of standing around some <laughs> like some horses and things like that so, yeah. so that's <laughs> That's very, very, yeah, very they're cool. They're like in stables for this photo yeah. shoot. That's awesome because, hey, why not lean into uh, everything like secretariats and, yeah, that's you're racing Louisville. Play into yeah. that all day. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you, you love uh, to see it. We love to chat about kit fashion. 